Oh, baby. Poltergeist versus Rywick. Uh, just looking at the win rate, I don't know. The win rate doesn't tell the whole story, but this is a pretty significant disparity in win rate in favor of Rywick. Oh, right. Maurice is actually have some Discord stream up. I'm an idiot. Ultra Ghost with a 33% win rate joined in MT14. So I think with those numbers must... Yeah, only lost twice, so did not join 15. That or the 15 stats are being weird again and is back for Mystery Tournament 16. I remember them playing in Mystery Tournament 14, though. Even though they only went 1 and 2, I remember at least one of those two losses was close and well fought. So, yeah, not a big sample size. Maybe don't go nuts on your predictions. But Rywick, with a winning record, despite only having joined Mystery Tournament 15, um, I mean, got to 21st place in their first Mystery Tournament. That's a really, really, really strong showing for your first Mystery Tournament. Uh, speaking of burning money on people. There you go, chat. I, I am fully 100% in support of your gambling habits. As long as they don't cost you real money. <clears throat> you can yeah, also tell... You. you can also tell they didn't join MP15 because it's their second edition card. Uh, yeah, that's right. Both players, second edition, it says on their cards. So this is their second mystery tournament. Players are testing what's probably a pretty cool game. Uh, I just had a really bad time personally testing it. I mean, a lot of it was tied to controller issues. But some of it is the game, so we'll see if the players are able to keep a cool head. Oh, wow. Internet Dirigible subscribing with Prime Gaming for 23 months. Thank you very much. Your prize is you get to do more Miscory. Yeah, that's just Internet Dirigible, though. Just because you sub, you don't get to make a show on Mystery Funhouse. Only, can... only ID. ID get its extended privileges. Yeah, but you could probably pitch a show. We're always looking for community events around here. There's actually a channel in the Discord right now for people to just talk about stuff that they'd like to see or do. It's a brand new channel called General Event Talk. Very nice. So we looked at, you know, win rate, overall tournament experience. We didn't really talk about the power conveyed by each player's display pick. And I, I feel like a crow that has used a steak knife to secure a rice ball and a packet of gummies or whatever that is from like a convenience store or whatever has an extremely threatening aura. What if, let me let me pitch this to you. What if that's your rice ball and uh, God, what are the, that's like the star candies is what those are. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What if that's yeah. yours? And he They're, just it's like gone. took it's up his arms now. to keep it. <laughs> No, it's uh, he can have it. It's gone. I'm not even gonna think about challenging to get that back. No way. The menacing aura for sure. And then Rymic on the right, uh, adorable. It's got a, it's got a little, you know, the mouth is doing the W. It's not quite an uwu though. It's, it's like an upside down uwu. The eyebrows are angled down. With, to indicate sort of concentration and or intense emotion, yeah, but threatening. it's way too cute to be threatening. They're trying to get into the gamer state, but they're too cute. <laughs> yeah, the tongue comes out. That's how you know it's focus. I don't know. Personally, I'm rooting for the bird that stole my lunch. <laughs> that's generally a thing people do when they get knocked out of a tournament or whatever they vote they start rooting for the person to beat them because it's like well if i got beat by someone who like went and won the whole tournament that's 
But I don't feel too bad about that. Yeah. We want good things for this murderous bully of a bird. What if the entire murder of crows has knives? Like one of them learned it and taught it to the other ones? Yeah, and then they, they like picking up shiny objects, but if they just stole a bunch of knives and cutlery? <laughs> just flying around a gang of, of crows. Just drop forks on people. <laughs> on <high>. Genuinely <laughs> dangerous. Well, they're a murder of crows. They gotta, they gotta live up to their name, don't they? <laughs> I guess they would. We can take a look at the match history. Poltergeist beating Apoco in Loop Loop DX, which was a mouse-based, for the most part, aiming and shooting sort of game. Really unique for Mystery Tournament. And came out on top. And then on the right, Gunner's Heaven. Rywick did really, really well in that match, defeating Fart Explosion. It was a, uh, it was like kind of an easy goal, but Rywick like identified that and just tore it to pieces. Just was holding right the whole time, barely got slowed down by anything. I don't remember archiving Rywick versus Fart Fart Explosion. I hope I did. <laughs> Because I have no memory of a game called Gunner's Heaven. It's basically Gunstar Heroes for the PlayStation. When was this match? <laughs> it was pretty early on. Maybe that's why. Because there have been like 111 matches or something. No. 111 to this point that I've done. Which was... Up to Sunday? Time is weird. One could give. One could have got lost in 111 yeah. matches. We've played a lot of games thus far in the mystery tournament. That's also so many that you might have forgot a name, a game with a name as generic as Gunner's Heaven. Oh wait, somebody put Gunstar Heroes in? Oh baby, oh I'm disappointed now. <laughs> yeah, hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look this up. Oh yeah, that was like match four. No wonder I don't remember <laughs> it. Good God. Tournament's come a long way. We started in the beginning of December, so we're on week f six now of Mystery Tournament 16. Oh yeah. Gunstar Heroes is a, an amazing game, uh, like a like a top ten Genesis game. It's one of the games where everyone says like this is why the Genesis is good. They hold it up. It's it's a really 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 cool game. Uh, but as a race, there are some boss shenanigans with like you can get you can fight totally different bosses basically in the second stage, and the fourth stage has a gigantic dice maze. And if you can land on a space that makes you go to the start and do the whole thing again, it's just doesn't quite work. It's a fantastic game. I would never wish it upon my opponent for a race. There are other uh, running guns that I absolutely would, but not... Not Gunstar Heroes. <laughs> also, thanks everyone for stopping by. There is a there is a big speed run event happening. <laughs> what? Games done talking. quick continues. Um, they're playing Ratchet and Clank right now. And they'll be going for a while. 
we got a couple of our local mystery community folks are going to be featuring, by the way, on... I think the first one is Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday, very early Eastern Time. 6 a.m. Eastern Time. Tea Party, Cthulhu, Cthulhu. We'll be playing some of the Typing of the Dead. Um... And you can also find Mooware, who's currently the moderator of this match, has been doing a great job moderating and pulling games for so many of our matches. Is going to be one of the racers playing something called Zadet, which I'm actually not familiar with, on Thursday at actually the same time, 6 a.m. Eastern time. On, on a similar vein to that, uh, I know I saw on the schedule, but... I didn't get to see it. Uh, Flannel Cat did a couple of runs for Magfest, like a week. Oh, cool! Ago or so. What were they doing? I didn't even really know there was like a stream for Magfest. Yeah. Uh, let me go yoink the schedule from that server. Where they were, they reorganized it. Oh God! <laughs> wow. <clears throat> You can go ahead and look for that, I guess. But come back quickly, because this race is going to start soon, I think. The right. racers have the game up. You can see now that it's Buster. This is a freeware remake of a Sharp 68000 uh, platformer with some kind of weird specific mechanics. A very anime. Yeah, the original, the original game as well. So, controls. Um, it's a double tash to dap, to double dap to dash. That's right, double tap to dash game. Uh, you can jump, you can double jump, you can hold it to hover. You've got an attack, and there's all these other like if you hold up an attack in the air, you'll do an up attack. Down an attack, we'll do a down attack. Um, if you're running and you attack, you do a slide, and the slide's pretty crazy. You can do it in the air. Uh, I think you're invincible while you do it. So, like, you got a lot of options in terms of stuff you can do. But it's all a little bit finicky. The double tap to dash, your hitbox is really big, the reach on your sword isn't very big. And your health bar looks big, but you take a lot of damage on every hit. So, it can be surprisingly punishing. I mean, sign me up for any game that has an air dash slide i know right i i thought this game was going to be so up my alley but i was playing it with a weird control setup and it was just hard enough that uh i couldn't do some stuff that i felt like i should be able to do so it was a really frustrating playthrough for me poltergeist is doing extremely well we saw a little bit actually of a, another mechanic where if you're close to a wall you can attack and hook your like a knife or whatever i guess it's your sword it just it's so small it looks like a knife onto the wall and jump off of it. You can, if you dash and jump into a wall, then you'll automatically like wall bounce off of it, like we're seeing there. Yeah, just some great play. Oh, a really Ooh. clutch. Getting to the the next screen with low health uh, takes a death. I don't think that was intentional, but probably should have taken that death actually, because you. I don't think there's a game over. So even if you were to run out of lives or whatever, I think Poltergeist would still start from Act 3 here. Yeah, I was about to... Oh, it's just uh, restarting current section on loss of life and game over, apparently. Yeah. So, okay. score is all that matters for that. Which means it doesn't matter at all for us. No, not here. Maybe in Miscary it would, but not for this. Rywick's still on the first screen of the... You know, sort of act one of the game. Which, like, probably doesn't feel very good. Two and a half minutes in, it's not vi all that long. Uh, sort of off to a rough start. Oh, how, how do we consider levels in this? Is it, uh, like, one, 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 which Ryewick is on, one, two, which we saw Polter goes on, and then one, three is the boss? There's a 1-3, and then the boss is at the end of 1-3, and I don't remember if you get a checkpoint at the boss, and we might be able to f be finding out here. Poltergeist just died. Game over, continue. Okay, at the boss. Nice. Okay. Well, 
like the original Buster on the Sharp, the music is pretty good. It's I love it. Yeah, on point. Prime goes down, Poltergeist is down. This spider, you can just hit it a lot, like all over the place all the time. It's just there, right? Like if you follow it, you can get all these sword hits. It feels like you should be just wailing on this thing, but it's difficult to like move away from it when it starts to come back towards you. Oh, I, I like I, what he's doing with that attack though. Yeah. I do appreciate the slide into attack into I guess that'd be an uppercut? A rising slash? Yeah, rising yeah. slash. What is, what is it Terry Bogard does? Uh, rising up ah, or whatever. <laughs> it's rising uppercut and smash at least. Yeah, so the, the spider's just ha hanging out and it, it can be kind of frustrating, but you kind of got to respect the, the way it kind of wavers back and forth and dodge because four hits and you're dead. Vulture Ghost on the last hit, but has done a lot of damage to the boss. It could die at any moment. Act 3 now for Rywick. Very good, very good. Making up some ground. At this level, it's for the birds, man. Yeah, the birds rule this domain, that's true. And down goes the spider for Poltergeist. Moving on. Moving on to 2-1. Yeah, the goal says beat 3-3. Three, three. So, you know, technically the boss is part of 3. But you can kind of think of it as a, a fourth stage. I wonder if that's going to confuse them when they get to the thing. Because they beat 3-3, three, three, it's no boss. Ooh, nice down attack to go through all of those enemies from Poltergeist. Gets got by some guy he couldn't see off screen though. That I that happens so much in this game. The enemy placement in this game is like Castlevania 1 levels of like this is this guy is here exactly where you don't want him to be to cause the greatest challenge in this part of the level. It's just relentless with its enemy placement. It feels like it really breaks the flow for sure. Yeah. If if you do what you naturally want to do to progress through an area, there's going to be an enemy who's going to do something to hit you on the way. Which sucks. You really want like that Mega Man X uh, tier of game design when you have movement like this. Well, I mean, I don't know if it... It, it breaks flow, but it, it also is like... It's forcing you to... It's just forcing a different kind of game, basically. You, you need to be more thoughtful about what you're doing. Teaching pacing. But you're right. When you've got the ability to do like an, an infinite or, or a invincible air dash that also damages enemies and you can sprint and jump and double jump, like you want to just go flying. Alright, we got a pause screen on Poltergeist. And a forfeit. So Poltergeist um, had a wrist injury, and they were saying there were certain games that they weren't going to be able to play. They thought they would be up to playing a platformer, um, and it seems that is not the case. Alas. I didn't even think about that, but this is a pretty demanding game. The double taps to dash... Uh, there's a lot of left rights to, you know, you, you jump, you see an enemy, you've got to back, back pedal. Uh, it is before 15 minutes that, that that makes any difference, yeah. But yeah, the Poltergeist is just moving. Looks like Rywick is aware of the issue. Yeah. Is not sure what to do. Didn't actually post anything, but I think that pause was them, you know, Thank reading you up on what was happening. Yeah. 
Ghost was doing well. This took me like 40 minutes or something. I think FFAO must have gone faster because I didn't play particularly well. Uh, but wouldn't... FFAO got caught by something for a while too, so maybe we're about the same. I wouldn't have been surprised if they got like 20 minutes on the pace that they were doing. Yeah. While it does get harder, I would have said closer to 30, but uh, yeah, a good 10 minutes faster. But Either this way, is a tournament even... for fun if you're in physical pain. Uh, yeah, don't don't force it. Yeah, be be healthy and mindful. Know your limits. And if your limits is screwing up your hands, don't don't screw up your hands. Be healthy, baby. Yeah, FFA also got forty because of something silly. But uh, I guess it's up to Ryan. Who's still jamming. And it's worth noting, even if this is taken as a forfeit, uh, Poltergeist is not out. Yeah, we are still in the winner's bracket with this one. Also, I guess the, the webs that the spider shoots out do less damage than contact damage with the spider. It's actually a three hit kill. Like, look how much, it's like a, over a third of your health bar if you get, if you touch the spider. Yeah. And I noticed that you can knock back the webs too. Uh, yeah. hand pain, Stella. Uh, Poltergeist is suffering from a physical injury. Rywick has taken some early hits and is you know, not able to react sometimes. These spider webs are really big. Um, and they, I don't know, the way that they come out, it's just kind of misleading. I don't know. You technically could just be slashing all the time, no matter what. And then if a spider web came your way, you'd definitely take care of it. But th this game's already asking you to do so many inputs. I wouldn't blame a player for easing up on it. What's really annoying is that the swinging of the spider sort of desyncs with when it attacks with its spider webs. Like, you, you kind of got to attack the webs. You can't really dodge them. They're gigantic, and you can't afford to be taking hits by them over the course of the fight. So you got to hit those. Um, so you can't be, like, focusing on the spider when those come out. Oh, there we go. Good, good spacing. There's a button to kind of suck in any of this money that's bouncing around the stage. There it is. Um, and you do have to do that before this final orb will appear. Uh, I'd assume they're points. Yeah, they don't mean anything. They're they have no oh, they... purpose in life whatsoever. <laughs> they have a different typo here, the bonus. Um, in the original game, you would get bounds points. Pretty good typo, honestly. Uh... What was kind of amazing was that you would get different bonus points for whatever your sprite was at the end of the level. So like, you know how like when it freezes, you would try to like jump in the air and do an attack so that you're frozen in the air at the end of the stage. You get points for that. It gives you points. Oh, hold on. You mean to tell me you get actual real style points? Uh-huh. Yep. Oh, dude, this game, I, I'm in love with this game. <laughs> Now I know it exists. <laughs> and I'm happy for that. Because that just sounds sick. You just try to rising upper everything to kill. Yeah, that's true. You don't you have, you don't want to get bonus points because it, it takes time to like count it down or whatever. So you don't want to do anything cool in the speedrun. You want to be perfectly still and get zero points. 
Um, yeah, right, wicked. Go ahead. Eat the time loss and do the rule of cool just to make the run look good. Uh, looks oh, like this Ryan is wicked actually just... this song is in the original game. I remember it. Um, Rybook hasn't said anything. They keep pausing as if they are going to say or ask a question or what should I do, and then they don't. They just keep going. So I'm I'm not quite sure where they're at. Uh. At some point, that's for the best. Because if they finish, that just means it's a regular match. Possibly could be direct messaging. Some weird funky Zubat looking enemies here. Wow, the combo. Taking a lot of lumps here. Yeah. Oh, they got a high score. So we saw initial runs from Ryewick were a lot of mid-air slides to go through a lot of enemies, and then after the game over, was just kind of carefully taking out the bats one by one. Sometimes it's nice to hit the button to pull the things in, just so that they're not distracting, bouncing around the screen. Oh. Just get rid of some of the chaff. I think that was an intentional hit from Ryewick to refill health. Wait, was like still alive down there? I guess there's a bottomless pit at the bottom? Yeah, but I, normally you die before you actually fall endlessly into a bottomless pit. Oh, yeah, that was it. We, the, the 30 hertz oh. flicker was a bit mysterious, but got hit by a bat way away from the platform. A lot of bats. Forfeit due to a uh, wrist injury, unfortunately. So, Ryuk is just playing through the game. Currently on 2 3. Oh, didn't get the double tap dash, but is barely holding on. I don't <laughs> like these fish, man. <laughs> yeah. They remind me of the. Uh some of the enemies from some of the classic Mega Man games, and I hate it. I don't know if this is a turtle. It's more of a snail shell on the back, but... Yeah, but it's got arms. It looks like a frog with the snail shell. Yeah, it's weird. Um, it, it will take space away from you. You can't do anything about it. It's just going to go somewhere, and you need to go where it isn't. Um, so it's tough because, again, that weak spot is there for you to hit over and over as much as you want, but it's gonna just, like, suddenly leap at you, and you have to respect that or you're gonna get hit and you cannot afford to take many hits. Also got some mill tank in there, I don't like it. 
The big thing I found difficult with this fight is you gotta be close to be getting your hits on that waypoint, and he, his main thing is he just kind of jumps into you, and it's impossible to react to when he does it. So you have to go early or kind of predict when it's gonna happen, but he does it faster and faster over the course of the fight, so you can't really get used to a specific timing. He went oh high. no, he went high. <laughs> he got hit with the mix. Yeah, Rywick could have done a slide and might have had the invincibility frames to go right through him. over sometimes you know what's going to happen and the solution is to do a dash jump but it's just really hard to quickly double tap and jump away so it just doesn't come out sometimes oh there we go that's the low what we wanted at a rywick doing a dash costs them dearly yeah them i'm not sure that might have been an accidental input or the idea was He's jumping to the left, so I'm going to get behind him and follow behind him and hit him a bunch of times, but he'll switch directions and go wherever you are. Alright, I got a lot of damage in. He's jumping pretty quickly, but cannot get hit again and is out of space. Oh, shoot. I wasn't sure he was going to hit the ledge and neither was Rywick. I think just going for this third hit is what's costing Rywick. Might as well do two in a dash. Just to keep some health. Because then with the dash you can reposition yourself a lot better. Hasn't got hit for a while. Uh, just got caught by some rocks and then really didn't want to dash into the corner. I'm sure that was an accidental. You said something, Myth, how could you? <laughs> well, when a player's doing well, I'm gonna say a player's doing well. Uh, yep. Oh, <laughs> gets, gets him right in the, the back of the head. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I found myself, like if I goofed early on in the fight, I didn't even want to try to clutch it. I would just die and start again. And I, I don't wonder if that was what Ryvik did. Yeah, I was actually so far to the edge of the screen that the, the turtle like couldn't jump anymore. He actually jumped backwards. The turtle, I called him. I don't know what he is. A frog station is uh, the go and name, it seems. Whoa, that was a... The jump was very quickly followed up by the roll there. That was hard to deal with. This is tough. Yep, it's gonna take. It's just gonna get hit. Not a not a heavy hit at least. What what? It did, it bounced like four times. That was weird. But you're right. The rocks seem to do less damage than contact with the turtle. Or hmm, it's close. No, it's. Oh, doesn't matter anyways. It's the clear. All right, now we're on some sort of savanna with Roman ruins. What? Yeah, that'll happen. Is the original pretty fun? This one is a little more... You have more control over what you're doing. I, I think it might be committed jumps in the original. It's a, I, I think of it in the, the same vein as like Castlevania. Oh, nice, catching onto the side of it underneath. I can't remember if there's a crouch button or if you have to do that. Birds are back. This is a regrettable uh, evolution of circumstances. 
so many enemies. Oh, those are spikes, by the way. <laughs> so you can see what I mean with the enemy design. It's just, it's just so tiresome. Get off the platform. What are you doing there? Camping. But that was a really oh, quick is this one clear. Problem? It sure is, and it's not easy. Mostly because it relies so much on the wall hanging, and the wall hanging is really particular. If you are not right up against the edge of the wall, then it won't do it. You're gonna have the rising upper right here. Yeah. Oh no! And for whatever reason, I could pretty consistently do the rising attack basically anywhere else, but right there on that platform where I really needed it, it wouldn't come out like a lot of the time. Like enough of the time that I feel like something was going on. Alright, has broken it. It's taken some damage, but it's still pretty okay. Oh, you have to... Alright, I thought you were going to have to do like a wall climb to rising up, and that would have been ridiculous. Yeah, I think you can do that, but I'm not even convinced. Then these things blow you back. These snake enemies up here are just really hard to deal with without taking damage. And I think what we just saw there was Rywick trying three times to do the up attack to get on that platform, and none of them came out. Good grief. I don't know, I don't know what it is. I don't, <laughs> I, it didn't seem like it was a thing anywhere else in the game except right here where it really mattered. And then didn't even get to start with that one. I saw I saw this first screen so often. I was I was I was kind of okay with this game. Again, I had I was I was trying to play the game on different buttons on my controller than you know Y to attack and B to jump. Um, on a on a SNES controller that is that would probably be weird on an Xbox controller. Uh, I was trying to play with A and X because the game recognized my controller, but had them backwards, which was not okay. And I, it was just uncomfortable enough to make this level hard enough that I couldn't seem to do anything right. And I was fully on tilt by the time I had done this five or six, seven times. Right. Looks like we're moving now though. Yeah. Um, uh, here's here's oh, the, the wall yep. climb to rising upper. I hate this. There it is. All of that came okay. One final guy, dashing, sliding, gets through. Act three. This is it. Now we have birds redux. <laughs> yeah, these things are annoying. The the midair slides can be good here. The up attacks, those are good too. It oh, sucks because... You know... Go ahead. It occurs to me, it's not Rising Uppercut, it's Rising Typhoon. <laughs> okay. Maybe Rising Uppercut is Axel from Streets of Rage. I think awesome. that's a super attack. But, uh, about this level you were saying. Yeah, well, you you can attack up and you can attack right, but you can't attack diagonally up and right, and that's where all of these beetles sort of, sort of seem to come at you. So it feels like you have these tools that should let you deal with them, but they keep hitting you. And I think it's because of that lack of a diagonal option. Oh, that was just awful time. Yeah, these... I don't know what kind of pattern these bowls are following. They're offset in really weird ways. Yeah, because it seems like there was a one where all of them flipped. Uh-huh. Which seems ridiculous to me. Whoa. A scary blowback that manages to save himself. They're like, look at this. <laughs> this. Billy. 
So the worst part about this, at the end of this of this screen, there's several blocks in a row that are you're up high and they're all down below you. And your instinct is, I'm going to do the drill attack and smash through all of these things. And if you do that, you're probably going to end up straight in a pit. Um, it turns out you need to hold right against the edge of the screen and you'll go into a little thing there. Um, I anticipate Ryuk is going to die to it, so he's going to get all the way to the end of the screen, finally be done with it, and then probably have to do it all again. I deeply dislike these bowls. It's also like, a, once the animation starts for them to flip over, like, they're not solid anymore. There's no grace period. It's really tight. Up. Oh. Good to be safe, just move back onto the larger platform. Yeah, I found myself doing this a lot too. Just really easy to get overwhelmed. And then the, you need to do these dash jumps on these one tile blocks, and I'm not, a, I don't know, double tapping is not a thing I'm pretty good at being consistent at. Oh. oh. So mean. Enemy placement is just so mean in this game. I get a remake of this game, but it's nicer enemy placement. <laughs> Double tap to run, yep. Catching with the down attack, I like it. Oh, there's three of them. Oh, God. Oh, this is terrible. Uh, threw in a little jump. If it, if he was grounded when he did that attack, he would have been okay. Well, that was interesting. Does that okay. not do damage? Does it just push you? It just pushes you. So here's the platforms. You're dead. That's yep. just miserable. <laughs> I told you. I told you it was going to happen. It's, like, it's so miserable to watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. What so the hell? It, it happened to me once, right? And I was like, okay, shame on you, game. Uh, and then I got there and I did it again. <laughs> you, so, you do it out of reflex. It's like yeah. in Ori, if, you, if you're like on top of a breakable like lock or tree or whatever, you, you do a ground stomp. Like, ground dead. stomp. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so terrible. Uh. So it got me a second time, which was which was my fault. But it got FFAO a lot of times. Um, FFAO uh, missed that you could hold right. I think that's what I did because I didn't do anything fancy. I did drill through them all, um, and did beat the level. So I think I just held right, and and that's what you can do. But FFAO realized you can do a slide attack, and that has sort of a hitbox below you that can break those things one by one. And then you have enough control over yourself to, you know, catch the wall, do whatever you need to do. Oh, and popped in midair. This is 3-3. Three, three. This is what I believe to be the last level of the pool, right? No boss? Boss. There is always a boss. The way, the way it's named... I would assume you do the level, not the boss. The boss doesn't say Act 4. No, it just says it's... boss. <laughs> like, this is 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, three and then there's a boss at the end of 3-3. Three, three. There's a checkpoint there, but it's still 3-3. Three, three. Otherwise, it would be 3-4. That's what I think. That's it. I will say it no. would not have made much difference to my time because I absolutely obliterated the boss with a, a crazy figure eight pattern because you, you wall jump off the wall when you are dashing and you're in a room with this snake thing and you can do a slide jump through the middle of the room. There it oh, is. It. Nice. Um, and hit the boss a bunch of times 
land safely on the other side because of your invincibility, jump into the wall and then go back the other way and slide kick in the air and just repeat that figure eight pattern to just murder the boss. And I stumbled into it really quickly. If I didn't do that, I don't know how long this boss would have taken me. So let's see how Reinwick approaches this. There's something that we need to be asking the boss. and it's, That is, are you okay? Because we are not. Are you okay? I love that. I love that Terry Bogard asks his opponent if they're okay before he absolutely murders them with a giant <laughs> fire blasts, attack. Yeah, before he blasts them out of the arena. <laughs> God. That man is a fighting game treasure. <laughs> Ooh, the slide it made a weird sound though. I want to say like that didn't do damage. Got to hit the head maybe. Ooh, but then a lot of segments turned brown all at once. Maybe those all were hits. Ryan has identified the slide as a desirable thing to do. It's now turned into classic Mega Man, always be sliding. It's through cleanly there, but gets tagged by a bone afterwards. Yeah, okay, hitting the segments is definitely good. Ooh, almost close that time. Almost. Yeah, you don't get a lot of opportunities to wall jump, so I would not have faulted Rywick at all for having sort of forgotten that it's a thing. Oh, wow. The whole Dude's snake is brown. Right through it. The bone... Oh, so close. Goes and sits on top of him. The humanity. is just trying to be really aggressive, but I, I aggression is the way to go, I think. The the boss takes up so much space on the screen, and it's so hard to avoid so many of the patterns that you're you're just like you're just gonna get hit no matter how hard you try. So just it's try to put on the damage. Yeah, damage race it almost. Just dive in and out. A few good hits on the uh, on the front half, not so much on the back. Yeah, well, I think that slide is going through and hitting all of them. It makes a weird sound, but I, I think it's just like canceling out the hit sound at rapid fire. Like you can see that they're already all brown back there. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And then the damage race is one. There it is. 36, 38 is the time from Rywick. I think um, Muwer is sort of trying to feel out what the players want to do, considering the wrist injury. Yeah. But maybe, maybe this is a win, and Rywick will move on, and Poltergeist will play another match in the lower bracket. Or maybe they'll reschedule and play something else. I'm not sure. Once upon a time, a blue-eyed boy from the Old West learned one of life's cruelest lessons, that evil was bigger than his gun. So he followed the footsteps of a mysterious master to the Far East, where he learned the secrets of the sword I guess Rywick at least will come talk about the match, so. We're joined now by Rywick. Hello. Hi there. Ooh. This is uh this is a sort of MT classic, I think. So you're you've joined the club. Oh, oh yay! I joined a club. Oh. Wait, is it an MT classic because it keeps popping up or because nobody likes it or because everybody likes it? It keeps popping up. I think probably opinions are generally favorable. 
Well, I, I enjoyed it. I wish I had the chance to actually uh, map my controller because I did not, I couldn't get uh, Joy to Key to work at all for me. So I ended up playing on keyboard and playing on keyboard was rough. I also played this with a control setup that was not comfortable to me and found it to be a very challenging game to be pushed in, in, in that way. Um, oh, the, so much. Yeah. <laughs> Like, There's, if you can't do your dashes properly, then it's just not turning out right. Yeah. I wish there was more health bars, but, I mean, this is an old game. Health bars were not quality of life yet. <laughs> well, it's not, it's not that old. It's a... I think it won it, like, post-2000 or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the the game it is a sort of remake of is a really old game from the the Sharp sixty eight thousand home computer. Oh my! Um, a long time so, ago. <laughs> yeah, it's like a like long forgotten game that almost no one knows about, and so I don't know why someone was like, "No, I'm gonna remake that whole thing." Like that's pretty wild to me. Um, well, good on them. Yeah. So this is a. I think it's a kind of overwhelming game in a lot of ways from all the controls and the really, really tricky enemy placement. Yes, they're very specifically like in your way. I do like that you can pretty much attack their projectiles, but I didn't figure that, uh, that out until much later. Yeah, that's true. And the, the slide is invincible too. Like it, it, You do need to be dashing, which is hard because it's double tap to dash. And the, yeah. It's difficult to find space to do that, but like having an invincible air dash that also damages things, that's a pretty nice tool to have. Oh, it's it's huge, huge. Uh, um, I, I have a theory that you were having the same problem I was having in 3.2, the vertical auto scroller, where you were doing the up attack to get on that platform that was moving back and forth and it just didn't come out for some reason. Yep. yep yeah. Pretty much. What's, what? Why? Why that? I, I had so much trouble with the up attack, especially when it was up in the air. Mm -hmm. um, whenever you're we on the ground, yeah, no problems. But as soon as you're in the air, it wasn't always doable. And I don't know why. Yeah. Like, you can only jump once and then you do the attack. But it wasn't always triggering. It's like, it, you have to be always on the uprising, not on the downfall or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, something. There's there's some kind of restriction on it that I was missing. I, and it looked like... You know, so I thought it was funny that you had the same problem. It gave me a little <laughs> bit of relief or whatever to know that <laughs> someone else was struggling tell me about the end of three three where you drop through all those platforms heartbreaking heartbreaking <laughs> like i fall down that hole i'm like no this was so hard this felt like this is the end i just have to drop down and like oh there's the exit and i fall down the hole it's like yeah uh it hurt it hurt <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a real crime in game design that very specific part because mm. everything is telling you, hey, do the do the down, but then you're punished for it. Yeah. And can you even cancel it? I don't know. I, I just had to, I just pushed myself to the right and I ended on the edge of the platform. Oh yeah, man, that... if this game has move canceling, well, sign me up even harder. <laughs> uh, if it does, that'd be great, but I didn't find it. <laughs> I didn't find it either. I held right like you did. FFAO didn't think that would be a thing, so... Tried all kinds of things, was stuck there for a while. Found out if you slide, um, you have a hitbox below oh. you that can break the platforms one by one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Did not think of that. I did not realize that either. I was just trying to... I just want this to end. <laughs> you should know Maurice was silent for the entire race. He's been in, in tech letting us run commentary. But he decided to unmute and, and had a... A laugh, a vicious laugh when you went right. through that pit. It just really, oh, <laughs> just it really got him. Laugh, one would say, mirthless. Just to mark the point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was. Thank you. It was. It was more. It was less at you and more just like that's just that's such a, a mean thing to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But overall, you played well. You did better than than both me and FFAO actually by by four minutes or so. So oh, even, did I? Oh, even on keyboard. <laughs> I think you did pretty good um, with a with a difficult game. So well done. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm sorry your opponent uh, has a, a wrist injury that has caused them to forfeit. Yep. Um, I 
from what I understand, it's something with wrist injury and COVID and allergies and a bunch of stuff like that just piled on. And I've been trying, we've been trying to schedule this for a while. And like, I, I, we can't keep postponing. I can't, I, 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 I felt bad for not offering the reroll, but I, I just don't have time. I need to move on to the next round. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, it's, um, it's, it's, I think it's fair. Um, there's, a. Uh... You know, it's a it's a game it's a video game tournament where you have to use your wrists sometimes. So it's unfortunate, but um, if you can't do that, then then you know you can't do the tournament sometimes. So we'll 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 try to you know make amends wherever we can. Um, like for example, Poltergeist's next match could get a little bit of an extension. Um, but no, you're within your rights for. For winning a match. Um, so you played well, and uh, you'll continue with a, a pretty good win. I think you're at five and two now, technically, in mystery tournament. I guess, maybe, <laughs> technically. That's, that's a really good win rate. So you move on to winners three. Uh, yep. Congratulations. Um, and thanks so much for coming to talk to us. Well, thank you, and uh, have a great evening. Thanks for hosting. Accommodate. <laughs>